Welcome, everybody, to CSU Channel Islands. My name is Professor Roberson, and I am so honored to uh, welcome Lika, <laughs> superstar, uh, to our theory class uh, today. Um, Lika is a singer-songwriter, but she also she teaches. Um, she does so much. She was on The Voice. She's a superstar. Um, we're going to be listening to her perform three songs today. It's Cherry Blossom, Dancing in the Street, but, thousand. and Thousand, but not in that order. It'll be Cherry Blossom, Thousand, and Dancing in the Street. We have some sheet music here so we can talk about the songwriting process. I'm especially interested uh, to hear what you say about um, everything songwriting and music creation. We'll have lots of uh, questions for Lika. So after she plays, I think um, we'll have her. We'll have you play one piece at a time, and then maybe we'll follow it up with some questions from me and also Professor Liu, my colleague, is here, and from any students uh, in the audience. Also, for my students, if you have questions, you can also put them in Slack if you don't want to ask them here, and I will go ahead and ask them. So, um, can we give a, a round of applause for Lika? Thank you. Thank you so much. I am honored to be here. And this is my third time here, and I'm so glad. It seems like every time is better and better because I, it feels like I'm coming back to home of my, my good friend, good friend of mine. So it feels good. Thank you. And yeah, what Malia said, please ask me questions, any kind of questions. If, even if you think it uh, doesn't make any sense, it makes sense, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm here for you. I'm yours for this one hour. Please do questions. And, but first, I will ask you a question. Uh, who loves to eat? Hands up. Just eat. Right. <laughs> Thanks God I'm not the only one. Great. Uh, who loves cooking? Yes. Cool. OK. <laughs> so and this is actually, I'm talking about myself. I love to eat, and then I love to explore new tastes, new flavors, new cuisines. And then if I tasted this somewhere, I come back home and I'm like, mm, Google, how do I cook uh, kush kush at home? <laughs> what, uh, how do I cook there, this and that? And then I find it and then I try to cook it at home. And then if I did like it, I continue doing it again and again, and I find out that I can do my own recipe. I can do my own dish that I maybe put a little bit more of this, less of that, and stuff like that. So, of course, at the same time, I'm talking about music. Because the first thing, we have to love it, right? And that's, we are all here, and this is a great thing. Like, we are like all brothers and sisters here. That's amazing. The second part is, yes, new new music, new styles, new rhythms, something that, when I say be open to new music, I'm not saying about new music that was released yesterday. I mean music that was maybe released <laughs> 300 years ago. Uh, but that, that is new for you. And for me, what happened amazing is when I moved I'm originally from Kazakhstan, and I used to study always classical music. I play guitar since I was 11, and uh, that was a big adventure till 25 years old when I moved to Portugal. I studied classical, I studied rock, I studied jazz, and I, when I moved to Portugal, I moved to study jazz. And then I the whole world open in front of me because in Portugal we have so many cultures there uh, because historically like from people from Africa from Brazil uh, we have a, a huge community from China as well because there uh, there are countries where they speak Portuguese so they go to Portugal for for living so they bring their cultures there so I love it when you go to a bar and you can listen here uh, music from Mozambique. Here you listen music to from Angola. Here you listen to Brazilian music, and then 
it makes you so much richer. So uh, like you, you just open new world inside, inside. Then what was the, the third part? The third part was about cooking at home, right? I'm coming back home and like, all right, I did like something that I really, uh, that I played maybe with someone. Uh, just jam session kind of they do jam sessions there are they like African jam session and you can go uh, nobody cares you're where are you from you're from Kazakhstan uh, you're from Portugal you play African music you don't play African music you can go and play with them and then it's like wow what I liked about it maybe I like some kind of harmony maybe I like some kind of rhythm so I'm searching about that I'm analyzing that and this is one of the it's my favorite part maybe and uh, this is what makes you stronger as a, as a composer or as a performer and just thinking about that just knowing new harmonies like understanding why it has such an impact to you why it gives you such an emotion and the I'll give you an example like once I was listening to some music and I was like maybe 14 years old uh, when I started to play guitar I wasn't that I didn't go very far very fast okay my first teacher he wasn't that good guitar player to be honest but he gave me the best what I could have he gave me he explained me, he taught me how to love music, how to treat music, how to love study. And I remember I didn't know a lot about harmony, so I heard one song, don't remember what it was, but I, I love it so much and because it was, uh, it gave me such kind of emotion that is, it wasn't predictable at all like I was expecting one thing and then it doesn't happen but it, then it happens after so let's listen uh, to that and you tell me maybe you know this harmony maybe you heard it before It's like when you're not resolving to one, but you're resolving to six minor. Like, I don't know what is one, I don't know what is six minor. And um, then I got the formula that really changed my life. And this, for, this formula, I'll, I'll play you something and you tell me if, you, if it reminds you about something. This harmony goes up or down? Up. Right. Um, does it have any logic? Does it sound right? 
Okay. Why why does it sound right? Tell me that. It's all the chords from Right. Yes. This is just the scale chords. Could you please help me to write it down? David, right? Thank you. So if we are in key of C major, let's write it down in key of C major. So the first would be C major and then you can write down like a C major 7 maybe. Yeah, perfect, thank you. D minor, uh, D minor 7. Then the third, what is the third, do you know? Yes, E minor 7, and then F, F major 7, G7, then, right, what's your name? Michael. Michael. Nice to meet you, Michael, thanks. You're going to play with Michael tomorrow, right? right. You, you were the guitar player, right? Yeah. Uh, where did we stop? G7? A minor 7. A minor 7, okay. And then the, the seventh chord? Uh, Half diminished, yep. How do we write that as a chord symbol as another alternative? <laughs> That's not correct. A half diminished 7? Don't forget the 7. What was the alternative? You guys know. That's right. That's right, yeah. So this formula, we call it, I call it magic formula, <laughs> because this formula that, that changed my life completely. Thank you, David. Uh, why did it change my life? Because everything become, becomes simple. Like you start to understand why it happens like this. Why it does uh, have this impact to me? And then I got to know about common progressions. Something like, do you know what, something about common progression? Yes. Yeah? C could you give me some example, somebody? Maybe something that resolves to one. Yes. Uh, two, five, one. Two, five, one. Oh, yes. Thank you, Michael. So, two, five, one. Uh, this progression uses so many times in every kind of music, in pop, in jazz, in rock, like everywhere you can hear uh, 2 5 one progression. And, well, um, maybe someone else can uh, help me, maybe you... Who wants to help me with minor uh, progression? Sarah, maybe you? No? <laughs> All right, Anita, maybe you can help me with my progression. You just write it down. Mike, Michael will tell you the chords. I don't know the chords, Michael knows everything. <laughs> All right, David, maybe you can help me just once again, please, write down the chords. Yes. Thank you. So, if we are in minor, if we are in minor, where we can go. So, uh, no, 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 just leave major uh, as well there. The other magic formula, uh, the same thing, but in minor. So if one is C minor, what is the two? The half diminished, exactly, yes. The half diminished. Are we doing seven chords? Yeah. 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 Say seven. Right. How else will you write that chord symbol for the D half diminished? Hello. Minus seven. Minus seven. You'll see that a lot in in pop charts. I I tend to see that a lot more than the D minus seven flat five in jazz and pop, more than the half diminished. The half diminished symbol is more like classical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the third chord, e, e flat, yeah? 
now because we have the what is the the key um, C in C minor the what is the uh, key right. symbols right. key signature oh, yeah three flats exactly so it's gonna be E flat major seven and then F seven and then G what? F minus seven, right? F minus seven. Thank you. <laughs> so we use major five or minor five? Uh, where? In the F? After, after F. Major or minor? Ah, here. Here we're going to use, uh, put it minor for now, and then we talk about it. And then. seven chords, magic chords that show you almost all the possibilities in the if you if you don't do any kind of modulation, you are in C minor key. And now uh, I'll play for you my song Cherry Blossom, which is in C minor. And maybe you can find some chords from this progression, C minor chord progression. Please take uh, put your attention to some two five ones. There, we're gonna talk about two five one common progression, right? He loved champagne. She was alone. The night was long. Besides the fear, she had a dream to stay with him.
you. Thanks a lot. So, what do you think about the chord progression of the of two five one? Can you see any? All right. When? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Molly, by chance, don't you have uh, one more copy for me? Oh, yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Right, on measure uh, 45, we do this 2-5-1 in C minor, and I wanted to, uh, to show you something on solo, because you see the harmony on solo, it, it goes C minor, then D half diminished, and D flat 7 at 9. So, uh, what do you think about this chord? What is this D flat 7? All right. I don't know if, uh, okay. So basically, it's it's just a two five one because it should be like D minor G seven. In this case, it would be harmonic minor and C minor resolving to C minor. But not to not to make it like sounding all the time the same, we do the Triton substitution. Uh, so this D flat seven is kind of the same G seven, but it's it makes it sound differently. I'll play it for you. Like instead of sounding all the time the same. because it sounds so smooth, so natural, like uh, the best example I can give you is this song. You know this, right? <laughs> so why doesn't, it sounds so perfect, why? Because bass comes down and the highest voice goes up and the middle voice stays the same at the same place, so it's just That's a mucho as well. All right. But is not a modulation of the whole song, of the whole music, but it's just going to G minor, uh, instead of going straight to G minor. He loved champagne, she was alone, the night was long, besides the few she had a dream. Let me see which part is that. When we have A half diminished, going to D7 flat 9 and result. Yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, basically, instead of uh, playing this 2 5 1 to G minor, I could go just straight to G minor. It would sound like this. He loved champagne, she was alone, the night was long. Besides the fear, she had a dream to stay with him. It would sound okay, but to make it smooth, to make this movement to G minor more smooth, more natural, I do this two, five that are not from C minor, that are already from G minor. So I do this little G minor, uh, two five to G minor, and then we stay in C minor. Uh, no magic. Could I elaborate on that? Of course. I Modulation gives our, us emotion. Like sometimes you continue always at the same key, and then exactly at the moment when you don't expect it, something happens. And uh, maybe as an example, I can play for you thousand, and we can take a look at this song. And uh, sure. It's a quick question. So in that case, I was wondering, yeah. was it planned, intentional, or it was just? Intuitive, like intuitive. Yeah, yeah, it was just intuitive. Yes. I just wanted... Sometimes I think about harmony. Sometimes I really use all, the, all these formulas, but sometimes I just, uh, just think, oh, it just sounds great. Uh, and then I understand, ah, okay, it's just, I do it to 5-1, to, to this chord or to that chord. So everything explains sometimes after it was written. So. Uh, if you have any questions, any questions by now? Not really? All right. Then I'll play the second music, Thousand, okay? So, this is the last song happening. And actually, the story of that music was, uh, was like this. So, I was studying in, uh, in jazz music school, and uh, by that time I was so obsessed about jazz and I was like learning every day new chords, new positions of the chords and I started to, to write like hard melodies with minimum 10 chords uh, in the verse, 10 other chords in the chorus so and one friend of mine he told me like why do you do that? Just do something simple just uh, just do a simple melody. Just say what is what's there. Like don't show everything you learned in all your life in one song. I thought, okay, maybe yeah, maybe I'm doing just too much, uh, trying to show that I know everything. No. And at that time, 
uh, I had a boyfriend and he was a sailor and he took a boat from uh, from France and was going uh, to to Africa to deliver that boat and he had some issue with engine so he stopped somewhere in the middle of the ocean and he was alone on the boat and I was like well um, that's a nice uh, uh, theme to write a song and um, and that what happened. Sitting in my room, playing my guitar. I've got so many things to tell you so far. I'm sitting in my room, and you are really far. I want to tell you what's in my heart. There was a heavy rain. Falling to the streets, falling from the skies, the benches and trees. It was a crazy thing to fall in love with you, to fall in love so bad, to fall in love so deep. Yeah, there was a heavy rain, heavy rain. I dragged my ball and chain, ball and chain. Sitting in my room, playing my guitar. 
guitar. And then on the second course, I repeat the same, absolutely the same melody, but an octave above. So I'm sitting in my room, playing my guitar. I think it gets, uh, it brings more impact. If you start like very intimate, I'm always, um, I'm singing it like almost whispering, and then I build the energy by building by uh, higher, doing the higher octave. Then, when I start the song, I do it completely alone, and then my band enters on the, in the second uh, part of the verse. There was a heavy rain, a heavy rain. And I'm actually, I'm just telling the story, uh, because any music is a story, any music is, is an emotion, and we need to deliver that message, if you have a message you have to find a way to deliver it. It can be your song, it can be song of someone and you just perform that. But it, have a mess it has a message, so we need to find a way uh, to achieve a level. If you need this level to play, if music needs to be played faster or uh, you have to sing it higher or you have to sing it lower or you say you have, whatever you have to do for music to be played as it should be to transmit the message. We need to do that. <laughs> so in my song I did this hiring of the melody all that time because I started from, from here and then we started. The verse starts from here, the second part of verse starts from here, and then the chorus starts from here. So every time I'm, I'm hiring the melody and when it comes to the bridge part, what do you think about the bridge? What, what happens there? Can you find this, this part in, uh, in, in the sheet? Maria, can I ask you for, for the quiz? Music? The music, oh. yeah. Oh. It's, in ah, it's, in it's here in yeah, the back. Oh, yeah. sorry, okay. Okay, so what happens there in the bridge? Yeah, it's bar 80, uh, 57, it starts on 57. It is a thousand shooting stars, Venus, Pluto, Mars. Some strange chords, like from where it comes from, the, the C minor 6, because we were in C major key, right? You can think about it as if it was C major or A minor. Like, I think to myself that it's C major, but in verses I think about A minor. Uh, but it's, it's, all, it's the same thing, basically. Why is it the same thing, C minor, a C major and A minor? Sorry? Exactly, yeah. So they have so many similar notes, the same notes in C major 7 or A minor 7, that it's, it's the same thing. What did you say, David? Keys. That's right, yeah. So, which key has F sharp? G. G. Or? G. Or E minor. Yeah, so uh, you can think about, I think about this part as if it is E minor. Um, and E minor, if we remember the, the, first, the first line, E minor is the third of uh, the third chord of C major seven, right? So I think about the if I were if I was in C major seven, and then I would just do E minor, and E minor is uh, it's from the family of the root, right? We have families here. We have three big families. What are three big families of our chords? The the root family, and then. The, uh, let me, let me, like, what is that? 
this. What is so here we are basically in the same family of words. We are in the root family. And if I do this and that, we are moving to another family. We are moving to the family of subdominant. Honestly, before it was always like that. I was coming up with some uh, some line, and then uh, thinking about that line, like, okay, see, I'm sitting in my room uh, and playing my guitar. So should it be? Should it start like like hard rock? No, it doesn't sound like hard rock, right? <laughs> uh, sitting and playing. So by line you mean lyrics? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, by line, I mean lyrics, but exactly. But also making style. What style do I want to... Yeah, I think, about, I think about the emotion that it should bring me, and then my knowledge about harmony and about uh, rhythm, it gives me, 
it gives me, okay, the result. What should I do to reach this kind of emotion? Like, I want something calm, I want something melodic. So how do I, how can I, how can I reach that? If I want something very, very calm, I would go to, uh, maybe I would mix, I, would, I wouldn't start from one, maybe I start from third, uh, from if I'm ma in major. So I'm starting to think about the harmony after the writing coming up with first few lines at least. But uh, lately I started to uh, try to go out a little bit from this comfort zone and uh, I tried to make up a song like completely without guitar because that's the thing I do since I was a kid. I started to play guitar and uh, as I told you, like I wasn't that good. I, I used to play classical music many years, but during all these years I was writing songs like almost every day and coming to the class sometimes not practicing very well what I should do. And like, hey teacher, I just wrote a new song. And uh, what I loved about my teacher that he was always motivating me to write more and more. I was like, yeah, great song. I don't think it was great at all, but uh, <laughs> that, that gave me an um, experience to, to do this, to do that, and this kind of stuff. And now I start to push myself to write uh, something without guitar. Like, I love to try to do it on piano, for example, because I'm, I'm bad on piano. Like, I can't play any chord, I of course I can count myself in simple songs, but I do it very slow, I have to think about the chords. So when I, I know, I'm on piano and it's wow, what is that chord? And also on piano because you can play um, different intervals that you cannot play on guitar altogether, like two minor seconds together, here minor second, here minor second. It's perfect, and it's like, wow, what is that? And it sounds new for me, so it gives me new, uh, new ideas, new emotions. That's how I write lately, and uh, sometimes I understood the power of the melody, because melody should be strong. It cannot, just cannot be like, oh, oh, oh. It, it should be like half, half, half predictable. It cannot be always super predictable, otherwise it's just boring, right? But it, uh, it's like a, a travel. Like if you go to a traveling somewhere, uh, you need to know, okay, I want to see this, I want to see that. I'm going to Paris, I want to see Tour Eiffel, I want to see, uh, I want to see these fields. But maybe you don't know what will happen all around this. Maybe you just book the hotel there and you just let, let it go there. So that's what happens in music sometimes. You just, uh, when I play on piano and start to compose from there, I'm like, wow, I didn't know that could happen to me. <laughs> Maybe you have any other questions? Yes, please. Uh, no, no, I don't play with my pinky, but sometimes when I do, like, kind of, uh, I do, actually, but when I do a, a uh, hit, yeah, so, because I used to play many, many years on, only by myself, without a band, so I had to make a rhythm, so sometimes I do hits with my pinky, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're not the first one who, who says this. Because maybe my position of, of the hand is like that, just like that. Are you not supposed to use pinky? Can you play guitar? So you want to use the first chord? Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yes? I question about chord selection. So I noticed in Cherry Blossom, there's seven chords in every Yeah. I struggle with playing just a regular triangle. Right. right. Flipping over to thousands, it's the opposite, right? Absolutely. If there's just one delta chord there. Well, yes. Yeah. Triads everywhere else. So I'm curious, is that is that a uh, was, is
is that a growth thing? Where was that also the first where you were just doing just doing triads and then later generating process comes with their own seven chords? Or is that a deliberate thing like no, I only want triads in this song and I only want seven chords? Uh, wow, well, that's a good question. Well, honestly not. I wrote that two songs more or less at the same period of my life. Uh, but what I did is I felt that this this song thousand it's so it, it's simple, right? It's da da ya da ya ga da ya da da. It, you don't and I didn't feel like I need too much uh, seventh chords there. So this this was really my decision to go to to as simple as possible and only in the bridge just do just a little step and then you come back. <laughs> And that was a great thing that uh, I need to notice that uh, it finishes uh, finishes in, uh, in dominant, right? Because um, the bridge also finishes in dominant in uh, in thousand, and it helps me to come back to C major again. It comes uh, it it finishes on G in G major, so very very easily without any any kind of. Uh, additional chords, I just come back to, to C major from E minor. Uh, that's, uh, that's about a thousand. And we still have one more song, but like, if you want to ask me something else. No, no, for now not. Okay. Dancing in the street. I wrote that song when I was um, I just arrived to Portugal, and then I was kind of depressed <laughs> because I was completely alone. I didn't know anybody. Though like I started to study, and my colleagues were very kind to me, and everybody wanted to help me and take me to jams, to concerts and stuff. But still, I felt myself like. I'm just alone in another country. And uh, I wrote that song when I just went outside and then I met uh, a street musician who was playing and I started to dance there. I just wanted, I just needed so hard to do something that doesn't fit me. I'm not the person normally who dances in the street after the rain, but that time I did it. And, um, and it did it work. So the song originally was made in G minor and we recorded it in G minor. But uh, since I'm having almost all the time some classes of uh, vocal or guitar and my, my voice changes and now it's much easier for me to sing this song in A minor. So we have it there in A minor. But in album it's still in G minor, maybe, maybe I will release it again one day. Bouncing in the street after the rain Oh my darling, I have something to say
if you try it once, you will want it more. Want to be you dancing in the street after the rain. Oh, my darling, I have something to say. Can you feel love run through your veins? Call love, heart love, God's love, crazy rising love, love for share. Dancing in the street after the rain. Dancing in the street. So that song is written um, in, in key of A minor and what uh, I like about it is that it, it changes the rhythm because I, uh, it, it's not very rich in terms of harmony, right, you know this? So it's only four different chords and two of them are more or less the same thing. So what do you think about the F major and D minor? So when I start, I go to A minor, then it goes to E minor, right? Then we go, I go first to F, and then I do the same thing, A minor, E minor, and I go to D minor, right? You, you can see it in the, in the score. Why do I do that? Tell me, David. Right. Yeah. Just a substitution. Yeah, because uh, the chord, the F major and D minor, they are basically the same thing, but to not to be very predictable all the time doing the same chord, I just do another chord, which is very close to the first one. So, in uh, how to build the song, I was telling you about a thousand, the same thing, that I started like whispering, then I started from the third, the melody, then from the fifth, the melody, then, then in the chorus we come back to one. So uh, here we did the same. Uh, on the recording we start from the very chill rhythm, and dancing in the street after the rain. Then on the verses we go even like slowing it down to reggae, like mm, da, uh, mm, da, mm, mm, mm. So sometimes we do double tempo back, right? And then on the the second chorus I say one, two, me, you, and then we go uh, our rhythm. We stay, of course, at the same tempo all the song, but the rhythm changes and it changes completely the mood of that song. So, then one, two, me, you. And then I love when I play with my band. We do it as a flamenco. Uh, sometimes, because I, I do... Okay. And then all, all the band goes crazy and uh, that's, that's so much fun to, to play with band. And I'm looking forward to you ensemble tomorrow. Do you have... Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do everything. Oh yeah. Tomorrow, that is what time? I think it's one at noon, right? Uh, 
probably. Then, uh, do we have ensemble at noon? And then, two, and, then, and then ensemble's at two, but I think there's a class, right? And yeah. Oh, yeah. Jazz class, yeah. She's, it comes to the jazz, right? Jazz. Yes, yeah. We do jazz ensemble, so the jazz and then ensemble. Classes, Yes, please. Um, do you write songs when you feel inspired, or do you say, okay, I'm going to write a song from this time? Good question, yeah. <laughs> that was going to be my question. <laughs> ah. And how do you come up with lyrics? It's a hard question, uh, uh, and I have to be honest, right? <laughs> um, I think that you should do it when you are inspired. I do it myself. I try to keep myself inspired all the time because I notice that while I'm practicing, when I start practicing and I start to, because all the practice I divide by two parts. So the first part of practicing is uh, I just do technical stuff. So I play songs that I already know. So I just, I technically practice it. I do it just better faster, slower, whatever, just better. And the second part of my practice is uh, researching new stuff, uh, learning new things. And sometimes I, I learn maybe some new chord position and it inspires me. Or sometimes I learn some melody or sometimes the part of my practice is just watching a concert on YouTube, just watching and analyzing it. And I'm getting inspired out of it and then I write a song. But uh, at the same time, I always have my, my little notebook with me when I write my ideas. Uh, like sometimes I just walk on the street and like, oh wow, uh, somebody passed near me and was talking on the phone and having a conversation with, uh, with his mom. And I'm like, hey, I'm not coming home today. And like, wow, I'm not coming home today. <laughs> and then it could disinvolve some ideas then after it. Maybe it has no sense for someone, but since it has sense for me, uh, that's what important. And then sometimes when I'm not inspired, but I feel that I have to do it sometimes as an exercise. And uh, I just took, um, take my notebook and like, what I do, what I have here. Sometimes I have like almost full song written there. And then I see it and I, wow, I'm getting inspired out, out of it. Or sometimes I just, I give a lot of classes. I have my own little studio where I give my, my classes, where I record the uh, arrangements and stuff. So sometimes I just have class with some student of mine and my students, I love how they, uh, how they do mistakes. Sometimes they, they do something that I think that won't work. Like, mm, but I said to myself uh, some years ago that I'm not gonna stop them from doing that like straight away. Like he started to play like this, tapping on a guitar, but he's like, uh, he's just a beginner. Uh, so I wouldn't stop him. I wouldn't say him like, no, don't do that. Just because that's not the way you should play right now. You should play this. No, just let him do. So. I do this uh, with my students and sometimes I let them inspire me because sometimes they do mistake. Like really it sounds wrong, but then it sounds good. And I'm like, whoa, what, what, what was that chord? <laughs> and yeah, just being inspired is like doing exercise to, to notice a great thing around you because so many great things like you guys are inspired like uh, doing your questions, coming here, uh, just giving me your energy. I hope to give you all of everything I have inside me, really. So this is inspiring, everything is. modulate to other 
Mm-hmm. You know, so like yeah, sell them. Like, 